brothers and sisters, I want to welcome you back to A Beacon of Light. I'm Brother Anthony, and today we're going to read Hosea chapter 13. So if you've been following along through the book of Hosea, you'll know that God's anger is stirred up against his people. God's anger is awakened because his people have been whoring themselves to freely serve other gods. They've been inviting other things into their lives. The book says playing the harlot, but I think we can understand when you whore yourself, you're letting strangers in. You're sharing something with a stranger that you should not share with anybody else but your husband or your wife. You know, uh, this is why God's anger is stirred up. <clears throat> because his people continue to turn their back on him and invite idol worship, uh, false teachings, everything that you could think of that goes against God's will. His people were doing. So God used the prophet Hosea. To send a message. To send a message about God's wrath. But what's better than God's wrath? It's God's forgiveness. Now this chapter isn't about God's forgiveness. This chapter is the relentless judgment on Israel. You know, uh, before we start, I just want to, uh, I want to thank Brother Anthony and Sister Angel and uh, their children, Ayana and Israel, for the great time that we got to spend with them yesterday. If you guys don't know Brother Anthony and Sister Angel, they are the youth pastors of House of Rest Church, and uh, they have a YouTube channel called House of Rest Youth. Uh, but they promised to be posting more videos, so I'm going to call them up on that. Only if I start working on my book. And uh, I'm going to start doing that when I have time today after work. But uh, I know God is good. <coughs> I know God is great. And there's nothing better than to spend time with fellow Christians. And have a good, just have a blast. <laughs> So uh, let's jump right into the word. <coughs> Hosea chapter 13 verse 1. When Ephraim spoke, trembling, he exalted himself in Israel. He lifted himself up in Israel. But when he offended through Baal worship, he died. Now they sin more and more, and have made for themselves molded images idols of their silver, according to their skill. All of it is the work of craftsmen. They say of them, Let the men who sacrifice kiss the calves. Therefore, they shall be like the morning cloud, and like the early dew that passes away, like chaff blown off from a threshing floor, and like smoke from a chimney. Yet I am the Lord your God, ever since the land of Egypt, and you shall know no God but me. For there is no Savior besides me. I knew you in the wilderness, in the land of great drought. When they had pasture, they were filled. They were filled, and their heart was exalted. Therefore, they forgot me. So, I will be to them like a lion, like a leopard by the road I will lurk. I will meet them like a bear, deprived of her cubs. I will tear open their ribcage, and there I will devour them like a lion. The wild beast shall tear them. O oh Israel, you are destroyed. But your help is from me. I will be your king. Where is any other? 
that he may save you in all your cities. And your judges, to whom you said, Give me a king and princes. I gave you a king in my anger, and took him away in my wrath. One more time. I gave you a king in my anger, and took him away in my wrath. The iniquity of Ephraim is bound up. His sin is stored up. The sorrows of a woman in childbirth shall come upon him. He is an unwise son, for he shall not stay long where children are born. Verse 14. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be your plagues. O grave, I will be your destruction. Pity is hidden from my eyes. Though he is fruitful among his brethren, an east wind shall come. The wind of the Lord shall come up from the wilderness. Then his spring shall become dry, and his fountains shall be dried up. He shall plunder the treasury of every desirable prize. Samaria is held guilty, for she has rebelled against her God. They shall fall by the sword. Their infants shall be dashed in pieces, and their women with child ripped open. Wow. You know, God, He loves you. He doesn't like it when we turn our back on Him. But He loves you. You gotta understand that. He will bless you. He will make your, your life prosperous. He will make your life filled. He will exalt you to higher places. But we have to show him how much we love him. We need to give him the reverence and the honor that he so rightfully deserves. And why does he deserve it? Yeah, because he is our creator. Because he is our creator. You know, and we need to realize that uh, he wants us to worship the creator and we should never worship the creation. Man, this is some really good uh, self-explanatory things, but his anger is real. I like the part of verse 11 where it says, I gave you a king in my anger and took him away in my wrath. Man, I'm going to read this little box right here. It says, Back to Baal. By Hosea's time, Baalism had captured the minds and hearts of many Israelites. Baal was the most important deity in the Canaanite pantheon. Baal's followers believed that his blessing guaranteed the continuation of human life and the preservation of social order. As a fertility deity, Baal was a provider of children, a prized possession in the culture of the ancient Middle East. As the god of the storm, Baal brought the rains and made the crops grow. Baal's devotees trusted that with the elements of the storm at his disposal, he could defeat the enemies of his people. As the king of the divine realm under the ultimate authority of the high god El, Baal overcame the powerful and terrifying deities Yam the god of the chaotic sea, and Mot, the god of death and the underworld. Recognizing the threat that Baal is imposed for his people, the Lord actively opposed this false religious system from the very beginning of Israel's history. He affirmed that he is the only living God. You can see that in Exodus 15.11, Deuteronomy 33.26, 1 Samuel 2.2, and Israel's rightful king, Exodus fifteen eighteen, Exodus twenty verses two through six. The Lord revealed His sovereignty over the elements of the storm. See Exodus nine twenty three, Deuteronomy thirty three twenty six, and First Kings seventeen one. So it says here, the Lord revealed His sovereignty over the elements of the storm. 
demonstrated his authority over the chaotic sea, Exodus 15, 8, and 10, and the realm of death, Exodus 15, 12, and proved that he alone could provide children to the infertile, 1 Samuel 2, 5. So let's read that again without the verses. It says, The Lord revealed his sovereignty over the elements of the storm, demonstrated his authority over the chaotic sea and the realm of death, and proved that he alone could provide children to the infertile. This attack on Baalism climaxed at Mount Carmel, where the Lord hurled a fiery lightning bolt down from heaven to demonstrate beyond the shadow of a doubt that he is the living God. In contrast, Baal's prophets with their frenzied mourners with their frenzied mourning rites could not provoke any response. When Jehu later purged the kingdom of Baalism, 2 Kings chapter 10 verse 18 to 28, the Lord's victory seemed complete. However, less than a century later, Baalism had resurfaced as a religion of the people, forcing the Lord to confront Israel through Hosea the prophet. How are we to explain Baalism's success? The Lord demanded obedience to strict moral and ethical standards as a basis for blessing. In stark contrast, Baalism appeared to the sensual nature. Baal favor, Baal's favor was gained through sympathetic magic in the form of ritual prostitution. Through these rites, young men and women supposedly could gain Baal's favor and ensure their ability to produce and bear children. Because of Baalism's attraction to the base side of human nature, it persisted in Israel. It promised an easy way, an easy and enjoyable road to prosperity, while God's way, the way of true life, demanded selflessness. Wow. So you see, the enemy knows. The enemy is so sly and so cunning. I hear about stuff, you know. Uh, I I look at a lot of conspiracy theory stuff. I like to, I like to just hear about it and and read about it and uh, about people selling their souls for fortune and fame. You know, uh, since I've known Christ. I have riches. I know I have riches in my heart, in my mind. I know that I have a, a riches in heaven. I know that I have riches on this earth. But I'm not, I'm not, I don't have money to throw around like that. But I have enough to be content. But you see, our enemy gets into our head and he lets you know that if you follow me, I'll give you riches beyond anything you can imagine. Remember when Jesus was tempted after fasting and he took Jesus upon that pinnacle and he looked at all the kingdoms of the earth. He said, if you bow down and worship me, I will give you all these kingdoms. I will give if. I will give if. I will give if you play the harlot. I will give you this and I will give you that if you turn your back on that one. If you turn your back on your God and worship me as your God. You see, our enemy is sly. Our enemy is cunning. Our enemy is sneaky. Fish, First Peter 5 says, Be sober. Be vigilant. For your adversary the devil roams about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. You know, inside these walls of this house, the Holy Spirit roams. But outside, in the world, the devil's roaming. I can see a big lion just walking across my, my kitchen window right now. I can see a, a, the devil just lurking about trying to find a way to, for Anthony Trail to slip up, trying to find a way for you to slip up, trying to come up with a plan that will work. But you know what, devil? <coughs> we no longer belong to you. 
We no longer, we belong to Jesus Christ. We were, we did serve you at one point, but then we came to our senses. But then we came to our senses and realized that we we're going down the wrong path. That we're going down the path of destruction. You know, Jesus Christ has given us life. You know, it might it may not be full of riches and gold, but by God, we have a home in heaven and we don't have to burn in hell. You know, we are all stars. I was gonna have my shirt. We are all stars in the kingdom of God. We are ambassadors. We will do everything we can to represent Christ, you know, and uh and I just thank God that He saved me from the addict that I was. You know, I may not look like it right now because God has restored me, but I used to be 150 pounds homeless, walking the streets of Stockton, stuck on meth, smoking the meth pipe, drinking, robbing people, you know, stealing cars, all that stuff. But look what God has done. God has restored me. God has given me a home. He has given me a place. He has given me the ability to, to speak his word. This right here, brothers and sisters. This right here is that mirror that reflects Christ. You look at this mirror and you see yourself in this word. And you apply it to your lives. And, and you see the judgment that he has on those who, who keep looking back. You see the things that uh, that God doesn't like and it gives you a reminder of, of, of the work that they all worship and the, and the bad stuff you used to do. But then it shows you his infinite love. It shows you a love that no one can give you but Jesus Christ. So there you go, brothers and sisters. <laughs> we'll go ahead and tune in tomorrow. And finish the book of Hosea. I pray that you guys have a blessed day. And. Oh, have a good day at work. And we'll see you guys later. God bless.